Hey everyone, it's John and today what I want to do is just walk you through how I set up my basic network automation lab. That way if you want to follow along and do one of my Genie videos or my Nornir videos, you've kind of got the basic information to get you bootstrapped and get going, okay? So that's the basic outline of this video, just go through the basic configurations and that'll be it. Okay, so the first thing I will say is that I'm using a Windows PC, Windows 10 in fact, so if you're using Linux or if you're using Mac, Obviously there might be some variation in how you'll have to set it up. All I can do is demonstrate how I set it up on mine. So like I say, I'm using Windows 10 and if you want to follow along and do my Genie Labs or my Nornier Labs, this is pretty much the setup I've been using. So you want to copy it, this is how to do it. So the first thing you'll notice is that when I'm actually using these tools like Nornier, I need to have access to a Linux terminal. Now the way I'm going to do that on a Windows PC is by using the Windows subsystem for Linux. Okay, so to get the Windows subsystem for Linux, what I'm going to do is go over to the Windows Store right here, click that. And what I'm going to do is search for Ubuntu. And you'll see this app. Now in the case of me, I've already downloaded this. As you can see, it's already installed. What you can do here is click download or install, whatever it says there. It'll just go right through the installation for you and then just click launch. That will then give you access to um, your Linux terminal, okay? This is what I'm using right now, and it's on Windows natively, okay? So from here, you can do your pip install genie, all types of things, pip install, uh, sorry, pip3 install Nornier. All these things can be done from the command line on here, so that's pretty much what I use to get me bootstrapped. The next thing I need to do is to have some kind of simulation or emulation software so I can practice running these scripts, okay? Which in the case what I use is EVNG, okay? So let's look at that. Okay, so what you need to do is have um, VMware. And what I will say is if you actually want to download and install um, EVNG, the best video you should watch is if you go to David Bomble and do EVNG. If you go and watch this video, EVNG installation in Cisco Images, this is pretty much a perfect explanation of how to do that. So once you've got that done, what you can then do is you'll have this, um, this setup right here, which I'm looking at right now, okay? Now, I'll just show you my settings. If we go to the Manage and the Virtual Machine settings, you'll see that my network adapter I've got is NAT, okay? So that's the way I want to have it, is set it in NAT. So if you want to copy me, use that setting. Now, if you look at the IP address here, this is actually pretty important. First, it's where you browse to to access your topology once you've logged in, okay? But secondly, this is actually the range which I'm going to be using for my management. So you'll notice in my topology, like my test beds when I'm using um, Genie, I'll have particular uh, IP addressing. It's based off this. Now, if you download EVNG, it's very, very, very likely you'll get a different IP address. If the IP address you get is 192.168.45.128 then what you want to be using is 192.168.45.0 for your management to copy what I'm doing okay so just be aware of that so what I'll do is we'll log in oh, if I can type that right John boy try again okay so we're now logged in let's open up a browser and browse to that address so 192.168.31.128 Okay, and just log in to our basic topology. Change this to native so I can use putty. And now we've got our basic topology. What I'll do is I'll close this one down. This is what I was using, I think, for Genie. Um, but I'll make a new one just so you can get a rough idea how to make these up, okay? So close this, and we're going to add a new lab and just call it uh, John Test one and enter. And it's going to open up a basic, uh, a basic, a free lab where we can just add our new nodes to it, okay? So let's go and do that. Okay, so let's just right click, select node. What we'll do is we'll do router and we'll have eight devices. <clears throat> we'll maybe change the amount of ethernets to eight as well. And just hit enter. And now we've got our nodes, okay? So let's just spread these out a little bit. Drag them over, pretty straightforward. And I'll not worry about making this too pretty. And the next one I want to do is get a switch as well. So nodes, and we'll do a switch. And because it's just a basic switch, I'll just change the icon in that to make it a little bit clearer, even though they're both the same. 
and we'll change the ethernet, maybe give it 12. Hit enter. Okay, so this is what we basically need to get this lab started. So if we just drag, and what we're going to do is connect to gig 00, that's what I like to use as the management, just so it keeps it quite um, consistent. So all, this will be all our out of band management interfaces. Let me just speed this up to hurry the video along. Okay, so this is going to be our out of band management network. Now you'll notice for um, illustration, I like to make the color of these links different. So what I tend to do in Eve Pro, you can do this. You can't do this in community version, but you can edit the style, change the color, and make this a red link. Just so you know this is out of band management, but they're just basic links, okay? So let me just do that and I'll pause the video. Okay, so now I've made them all red just for illustration. Okay, so the next thing which I'm going to do is just connect these together so we can get an actual topology. Now, I think what I did in, in the Genie video was just pull these together. Um, this will be our actual production network we're simulating where we'll have actual configurations on it. So just speed this along. So now you should have something that looks roughly like this. Now often you'll see that I might change the link styles to make it look different just for aesthetic purposes. Clean up a little bit so I can maybe change the links to bend in that but don't you worry about that. If you've not got pro version you can't do this but it doesn't matter anyway. It's just simple. It's just uh, an aesthetic thing. You can just leave it as straight okay. And what I also want to do is actually right click, select network and then choose management cloud zero. This is how I can have the topology connect to my actual PC, i.e. so I can reach the network with my Linux subsystem, okay? So just connect this in here. Do that. And that's pretty much us. So all I'm going to do is go over here, more actions, and start all nodes. It'll take about five minutes for all the devices to uh, fully boot up. So I'll pause the video and come back in two seconds. So just before I switch these on, what I want to do is just quickly go to my GitHub. Uh, GitHub. You'll notice that the IP addressing scheme, so if I go into my test bed, like you'll see here, IP address 192.168.31.11, next one 31.12. That is because, like I said, the IP address I'm using here is 31 dot something, okay? Now if you actually notice, the way I'm going to be able to connect to this topology is to the VMware adapter which is on that network. If I just do cmd do an IP config, you'll be able to actually see, nope, don't close that, the VMware adapter is actually on that network, okay? 192.168.31.11, so if I can ping everything within that range, okay, see that slash 24, that's why I'm making the topology, the topology um, this range. Like I say, if your VMware adapter is 56 dot one then you want to be using IP address of 56 dot whatever and like I say because this is taking the first IP address router one I'm just making it 11 rather than one and router two I'm making 12 rather than two and router three 13 rather than three so that's basically the IP address and format I'm using okay so now let's go and just turn these actual machines on so what I'm going to do is reach these devices over SSH so let's put on some basic configurations to do that so this will be router one so Oh, fucking type John Boy. Host R1. No IP domain lookup because I find that annoying. <laughs> okay, now username John privilege 15 password Cisco. Okay. Next, I'm going to do is an IP domain name and just call it whatever Cisco.com. And then I'm going to do IP SSH version 2. Crypto key generate RSA mod 1024. And then just do align vty04 trans and I'll just do all you can do just SSH if you want and log in local okay so that's the basic um, SSH stuff configured but what I need to do is I'm going to put the gigabit 00 interface into its own VRF so it's completely separated from, from the production network okay so let's go and do that just now so I'm going to do VRF definition and give it a name management and we'll do address ipv4 okay and what i'll do is i'll exit out and go into the interface do int gig 00 vrf forwarding management 
Okay. Now, whatever IP address I put in here is going to be in its own separate VRF. In the case, what I'm using, the management range is 31.0. I'm going to do IP address 192.168.31.11 with a slash 24 mask. Okay. No shut it. Okay. Show IP in brief. And now I should be able to ping that from my PC. So 192.168.31.11. And I can, and I can actually ping it from my Windows if you do it from here as well. Ping 192.168.31.11. So this gives me reachability into the topology, okay? So we're just going to pretty much repeat these steps, okay? So let's just do that then. Okay, now, so let's just basically repeat those steps by using some old school automation, which is Notepad, okay? So let's pull this up. Um, just change that. So I'll just do no IP domain lookup. Oh, do IP domain name Cisco.com IP SSH version 2 crypto key gen RSA mod 1024 line VTY 04 trans and all and we'll log in locally if I do VRF definition management and address family IPv4 exit out interface gigabit zero zero and we do VRF forwarding management and that should pretty much get us going. We'll just copy this and go on to router two and just do host r2 and then paste the rest. There we go IP address 192.168.31.12 this time. I'll oh, fucking take the right mask in. And just save that and just do the same thing with router 3 host r3 paste the rest ip address 192.168.31.13 and i'll just pause the video up oh, <laughs> i'll just pause the video and do the rest with the other routers up to router 8 the exact same thing the exact same pace and just changing the router names okay so just hold tight and we're back in a second okay so that's me went and copy pasted all those configurations into all eight devices. So now we should be able to reach them. So let's go and test that. Let's open up our Windows subsystem for Linux. And we'll just do a basic test. So we'll SSH at John, because that was the username we used. Uh, 31.11. And do, uh, sorry, password is Cisco. And let's try 12. Yes, save the key. Run through these quickly. Just add all the keys to the list. Mm -hmm. Last one. Okay, so we now have reachability to all our devices. So the next thing I'm going to do is pretty much just put some configurations on the actual topology. Okay, so now this part, you can literally put any configurations you want. It's pretty much irrelevant to the automation lab. It's pretty much what you just want to see. So I'll just quickly just do a wee bit of configurations here. So grab router one and I'll do enable, do int gig zero one, IP address 10.0.0.1, the 252. And let's go to the other side here, gig zero one. And gig zero one IP address. So they should be able to ping each other. Yep, and if I just did something like router EIGRP, no auto summary, all the networks, and then got to here. We'll now get our adjacency pop up and that's it and if you look at the actual routing table because we've got a vrf in you're actually not going to see the 192.168.31 network you'd actually have to do a show ip route uh, vrf management to see that routing table so basically it's in a completely virtualized uh, virtualized routing table so you don't need to worry about interfering with your actual production network and it gives you full access to the network even if um, you're making changes to the production so if production you happen to make a change whereby 
you change some OSPF configuration and suddenly you lose an adjacency, you're not going to lose reachability to the network because you're actually using out-of-band management. So that's the way I like to configure it. So like I say, you can pretty much add any type of configurations onto the production network. You can change these IP addresses to 192.168, 100.1, 100.2, whatever. You can put access control lists, whatever you want to test for. The main thing you need to do is just get the reachability sorted out and that's pretty much what I'm covering. So just before I finish, let's just try a wee script then, okay? So let's move into, what will we do? We'll go into Nornia. Oh. And what will we do? I've got my other Nornia folder, don't I? Runbooks, and we'll see the runbooks, and I'll see the Nornia script to put that in Nornia. I copy over. Oh, because it's in the wrong folder. <laughs> Do that. Okay, so that's us now. So CD Nornia. And if I just do Python 3 Nornia scripts, we can now access, um, do a show, uh, what will we do? Show version. We can now run our automation tools on our Eve topology by accessing it from a Linux terminal on Windows, and that's pretty much how I set it up. So that's pretty much the end of the video. Thanks very much, and I'll see you guys soon.